Hello and welcome to the crypto channel. We're going to go a few things through a few things today, um, but I wanted to kind of point out a video that I did before and you may want to watch it. It's just kind of uh, my thoughts on what Edward Snowden was saying at a Bitcoin conference in Holland. Um, I'm not saying go watch that video because I'm amazing and I do amazing videos, but because it's a really thought provoking kind of ideas that he comes up with and it may help not only with your thoughts on where the crypto space is going, but also I think it's actually pretty good for mental health, his kind of approach and his uh, viewpoint on the world as it is. To briefly summarize, he was just talking about you see so much stuff that you don't like in the political world uh, or the power structures of the world where so much so many wrongs seem to happen. But as he says, kind of all of these small wins that we have very slightly change the ship, the direction of the ship of humanity uh, into a better and better direction. And that's why he did what he did. So he's been kind of on the run for many years um, because he exposed something that shouldn't have happened. And he's still living in that kind of gray area as to is he a whistleblower? Is he protected or is he not? But he was talking about cryptocurrencies, uh, blockchain, uh, decentralization, privacy and things like that and how so much of this space has been attacked by uh, powerful people uh, and manipulated by powerful people. But the thing that this space is doing is ever slightly changing the direction of kind of humanity for the better. And no matter how much people try and attack it, it kind of awakens the people in society to look at this space, to look at the ideas, to look at the ideas of decentralized finance, decentralized money, less power to the powerful people and more power for, more power for kind of humanity as a whole. Um, it's a fascinating speech that he does. If you want to watch the actual video, uh, it is out there somewhere. Um, just type in Edward Snowden Bitcoin Conference Holland. Uh, it is truly fascinating. But as he says, so so much of what's happened to him personally, and it can, you can kind of relate it to the crypto space. As he said, the power never seemed to be accountable. The governments never seem to be accountable for what they do. They get exposed for doing bad things and then the rules get changed so that they don't do it again. But no, nobody ever goes to prison. Uh, nobody ever has to stand to account. No one loses their job. And many people find that very frustrating. And this is why I went about, uh, I spoke about kind of the, the way of uh, it may help your mental health. I think he has a very healthy way of looking at it. So he was on the Joe Rogan show and Joe Rogan was saying, well, you know, they've attacked you so much. No one lost their job. No one went to prison and still they're attacking you. How can you be happy? And he says, well, I accept that the powerful people will generally not be held accountable, but it will ever slightly like the things that he did will ever slightly change the direction of humanity for the better. Um, and that's kind of the goal. It's the small wins that change things dramatically. And although we don't see any kind of here and now um, repercussions for what has been done in the past, and we've all seen kind of madness happen over the last few years, ever slightly, people wake up, people realize, people understand, people write articles, people debate, and ever slightly, we change the direction of humanity into a, hopefully, a better space. Time will tell. But if you want to watch that video, then that is the previous video that I've done to this. Okay, so this is from T. Uh, bro, look at the timing of these events today and tell me this isn't a series of orchestrated moves on a large magnitude. And it's in regards to Watcher Guru that says, Justin, Binance will stop accepting new UK users. It seems very weird that the UK seems to be hit, getting hit quite hard. I'm in the U, uh, UK. I believe it was Citibank said that they will no longer uh, allow crypto transactions in the UK. And you're just like, why? I mean... Why are banks allowed to use crypto? Why are, you know, this te this space is becoming so much more mature than it was. It's much less the Wild West. Regulations are being, uh, being made and created and have been created to show that this is a, a proper kind of legitimate space. But yet still, they're trying to stop people from uh, allowing themselves to buy up crypto. So Binance will stop accepting new, new UK users. You know, I, I don't know what games they're playing, but it all does seem a little bit of a game uh, that they're playing. Okay, there's this guy called Greg, and he makes me laugh all the time. And when I'm trying to do this research and I'm looking at various uh, financial outlets to try and find the news of the financial world and crypto world to bring it to this channel, there's always this great call, uh, kid called Greg that makes me laugh every time. And when you spend too much time on X, it really is like a 
like a boxing match in your head, you kind of feel a bit bruised and battered after you've spent a long period of time on X because there's just so much vile stuff out there, so much nasty comments. I mean, yeah, there's, there's, a, from my experience, there seems to be a lot more mean stuff as opposed to happy and joyful stuff. And this kid comes out and he makes me laugh and laughs are harder and harder to come by these days. So highly recommend you follow him. Why not? He's called Greg and he says, when I was younger, I could walk in a store with $10 and walk out with a packet of Oreos, a case of Mountain Dews, a bag of Doritos and two Red Bulls. Can't do that anymore. Too many cameras. And every day he just writes little things that just makes me smile or makes me laugh. I've got, <laughs> I've got another one. This is the other one. If Bitcoin breaks through 29,500 and keeps going up, it could be heading towards 30,000 next. <laughs> yeah, makes me laugh. Maybe it's just my... So he's obviously stating the obvious that if you're at 29.5 and it goes up, you'll probably be at 30. Um, and uh, I think he's got his finger on the pulse of kind of what's funny because so many like serious crypto people out there go, oh, we're at 29.5. I think we're probably heading to 30. And well, yeah, uh, no shit. Of course, if we keep going up from 29.5, we're going to hit 30. Okay, this is replying to the SEC Gov. The best source of information about the SEC is from the XRP Army. And this is basically the SEC came out and says, careful what you read on the internet. The best source of information about the SEC is the SEC. Um, and if you read through the comments of what the SEC gets, so this is from the official account, account of the US Securities and Exchange Commission. Not many people have very good things to say about them. And again, at the beginning of this video, we were talking about uh, Edward Snowden, his thoughts on humanity as a whole and crypto and decentralized finance and taking power away from the powerful and giving it back to the masses. And you have spaces like X where generally I think uh, Elon does a fairly good job, but we've seen digital asset investors account just being wiped with about 380,000 followers. So I don't know what was going on there. I'm not very pleased with Elon Musk about that because that's someone's five years of work and you've literally just deleted their entire life on X at the click of a button without an, even telling them why you did it or allowing them to appeal it. At least YouTube allows you to appeal stuff. Um, so yeah, I think you know people like the US Securities and Exchange Commission, they have to operate on things like X because it's one of the biggest platforms out there and they just get such a kicking every single time they're on. And Gary Gensler, every single time he's on, gets an absolute kicking of people just saying, what you're doing is wrong. Uh, we smell corruption, blah de blah And it happens with so many politicians as well on X, where all voices are kind of allowed and they can't kind of hide from the feedback that they get. Unless if you're really, really powerful and there are a few very pe powerful people out there where you're not allowed to reply to their comments. Uh, you're not allowed to reply to their posts. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. Uh, okay, so XRP adds over 11,000 accounts in 12 days. The total XRPL wallet surged to 4.812 million. I saw a fascinating report saying that something like 3 million of those accounts of the 4.812 million now only have something like 500 XRP in it. And so many of the accounts have much less where they've got kind of 20 XRP in it. So if you actually look at the kind of the top one and a half million accounts, they hold the majority of the XRP that is out there. Okay. Ripple CTO reacts to a mysterious 410 million XRP transfer with a strange 20 XRP gas fee. So he's basically saying in this article that the person transferring it kind of messed up a little bit and there are certain things you can do if you're technically minded where you can actually change the kind of the gas fees and he says basically nothing has gone wrong with a ledger it's just what that person has decided to do or what the entity has decided to do and you know 410 million xrp were transferred and 20 xrp was the gas fee and they're basically saying that was really high but you know 20 xrp so it cost them what, nine pound around about, uh, I don't know what that is in dollars, to transfer 410 million XRP. So it's still not a lot. Okay, there seems to be a 
view, this is from the Kobayashi letter, there seems to be a view once inflation hits 2%, interest rates are going back down to historic lows. However, markets are now pricing in permanently higher rates. Markets are pricing that the Fed funds rates will bottom at 4% in 2025 and then start rising again. The same can be seen in Europe where rates are expected to bottom at 3%. Higher interest rates are the new normal. The era of free money is over. So I remember when I was a kid, you generally had interest rates. And, you know, if you had money in your bank account, you would get, uh, you would get interest on your savings. And if you had a mortgage, the mortgage rates would be quite a bit higher than they are now. And then we entered this kind of weird world where there was you got no money, you got no interest on your money in the bank account for years and years and years. And uh, interest rates have just been at historic lows. So are we entering a period of time where interest rates are just going to stay higher, uh, which means borrowing money is going to be more expensive? Jenna X. I'm just here for the crypto, just the crypto. I included this because this is my thoughts as well. When you're trying to go through X and trying to research and find out information, and all I really want to do is I basically mainly, I, I only follow crypto people or financial people that have interesting things to say about the markets as a whole. Uh, I follow quite a few of the billionaires out there and just generally groups that gives me the information to then put out to you. But there's just so much kind of nastiness that you don't want in your head uh, that you see on X. So I agree with Jenna X. I'm just here for the crypto, just the crypto. But when you research the crypto, you do have to un uh, understand and research the financial markets as a whole. Kevin Cage, beyond the roles you play and the beliefs you hold is a profound truth. You are infinity, momentarily experiencing the now through a singular lens. Kevin Cage seems to be quite a spiritually sort of guy. Uh, I thought it was quite a sweet comment. Beyond the roles, beyond the roles you play and the beliefs you hold is a profound truth. You are infinity, momentarily experiencing the now through a singular lens. Food for thought, you know, are we part of a divine intelligence that created everything we know, see and what we don't know or what we can't see? And we're just kind of part of that intelligence. And when we no longer are here, we kind of go back into the ether. Who knows? So there's a lot of posts uh, going around with uh, Alex Cobb put this out $14.50 USD worth of groceries in Argentina. So it goes uh, shows that you can buy a lot of groceries. So it's basically a picture where you've got a lot of meat, one, two, three, four, five massive kind of portions of meat, a load of uh, fruit and veg, bottle of wine, some eggs, uh, etc. And then you're seeing kind of other prices around the world of people going, well, I live in this country. I live in America at the moment. And look what a hundred dollars only gets me this. And then someone else in their country going, this only gets me this. These, and it, I included this because these are the things that people care about. How far does your money go and how much food can you buy and how well can you heat your house and how high the price is compared to what you're earning? Because when they say things like, oh, inflation is only two, three percent, people are going, this just doesn't make sense because I literally can't afford to heat my home and put food on the table. And I'm working a full time job, whereas my salary hasn't really increased. And in five years ago, I was leading a very good life. I could pay for stuff. I could pay for a little extra stuff, some stuff for my children and stuff. But now we're just trying to put food on the table. Uh, these are not healthy times within the economy. Why did I include this? Okay. Uh, I included this because knowledge is good and it's always nice to know a little bit of knowledge. Here's a guy killed by his own beard. Hans Steininger's legendary whiskers and the unfortunate end. In the 16th century, Hans uh, Steininger the burgomaster mayor of Brunau am in Austria was famed not just for his leadership but for an astonishing physical attribute. Uh, his long beard measuring over four and a half feet, it was a source of local pride and fascination. Uh, Steigner's beard was so lengthy that it often rolled up, tucking into a leather pouch to prevent it from getting in the way. This wasn't just a matter of convenience, it was necessary measure to ensure his safety as he moved about. The beard had become his signature, making him an easily recognisable figure in Brownau and beyond. And basically what happened in Austria, there was a fire, and he didn't have time or didn't think about rolling his beard up. 
and he actually ended up tripping over his beard and he smacked his head and died. But he is a kind of a famous person in Austria. Uh, Hans Steininger. Uh, I used to live in Austria. It is one of the most beautiful places in the world. But today, Hans Steininger's tragic tale continues to resonate. In a testament to his enduring legacy, Braunau and um, in-house, a museum where Steiniger's preserved beard is displayed, a poignant reminder that the man, his magnificent mane, and the peculiar circumstances of his death. So they actually have his beard. Uh, so I guess they lopped it off when he, uh, he perished. <clears throat> and you can see that in the museum, if you're interested. So there's a little bit of history today. I bet you didn't think you'd get that on this channel. Okay, Ripple XRP, the four digit xrp narrative has done more damage to people's mindset than anything else i get it it's clickbait and sexy and we all want a moonshot but understand you have all been playing by uh, you have all been played by kids taking advantage listen to the ta guys i included this again food for thought there has been a lot of hype over the years i mean most of the people that i follow when they started their channels they were giving absolutely huge insane price predictions and they still do. A lot of people do. Will they happen? Will they become a reality? And then they can go, aha, I told you so. Look, we're at these huge prices. I think it is frustrating when you hear those prices and we're still at, you know, the, the levels that we are now. It's, um, people, people get frustrated and then they start turning on the people that have been given these huge price predictions. And I think that is everything that we have today. So the last thing I will kind of really mention on today's video is really the Edward Snowden kind of the thought process on where we are with the technology of cryptocurrencies, blockchain, decentralized finance and tokenization, everything we're seeing. This technology is the most kind of uh, disruptive technology to the status quo of the big powerful people. And that's why we're seeing so much kind of kicking and screaming in the space whilst people try and hold on to that power or gain control of that power. The one thing I think is important to think about is I don't think this space is going away. I think people are just trying to gain control of as much of this space as they possibly can. Just like in the dot-com bubble when the big powerful banks etc had missed the opportunity because the markets rose so quickly. They quickly crashed the markets with their narrative and stopped lending people. The markets went back down. They all then bought in and allowed the markets to go up when they could make all the money. But in regards to kind of Edward Snowden and his kind of thoughts and i think people like him um are very scary to the powerful powers that be because they really do uh, beautifully articulate their thoughts and they have thoughts that kind of counter the narrative of the powerful and show you that there is hope and light in the world and that we are actually going into the, in the right direction the technology that we're seeing all around us <clears throat> excuse me in the crypto space you know is really trying to go for decentralized finance Whereas what the government are trying to do is around the world is they're trying to come up with their own version of this of CBDCs where they could ultimately have complete and total control. So humanity is trying to use this movement for complete freedom and decentralization of finance. And the powerful people obviously want the power, like the power, want to keep the power. They're going to try and bring out these CBDCs. I kind of am on the fence of whether or not CBDCs will fully work over a long term because I think humanity will wake up even more once you know the normies wake up to their news stations and realize oh wow today all of a sudden we're on cbdc's and then a world event happens where the power of those cbdc's is used and they go yeah just just so you all know you can only use your money within your 15 minute city and oh we're going for another lockdown which means you can't use your money past a half a mile radius or a mile radius of your house whatever they decide to do or you definitely can't use your money to buy plane tickets at the moment and oh at the moment we don't have enough wheat so you're not allowed to use your money to buy wheat whatever they decide to do i think we're at that kind of interesting fork in the road of where humanity and society goes time will tell this is why we're in this space this is why we're trying to follow it um but what it seems with Ripple, the company, is they seem to be working hand in hand with the powerful people, which, you know, as a company, it kind of makes sense. You don't want to 
be against them because they will just, like Brad Garlinghouse said, they will roll their tanks down the road before they ever give you complete control of their system. So it makes sense that a company like Ripple would work with the incumbents, with the central banks, uh, partnership with the Bank of International Settlements recently. Uh, you see them at Davos with the World Economic Forum. It's no surprise they're with them and it seems that the CBDCs will, uh, at Ripple, the company, will play a huge role in these CBDCs along with XRP. But how will the future then go? Once they have their CBDCs, are they going to allow all of these cryptocurrencies to, to work? Will they win the fight and just basically say, you're allowed CBDCs and you're not allowed anything else? No one else, this is, no one knows, this is all speculation, I'm just giving you food for thought. Uh, are they going to allow these cryptocurrencies to thrive? The SEC, for example, has been trying to destroy them, but the courts have actually come out and going, well, actually, no, Ripple is fine, XRP is fine, XRP is not a uh, security on the secondary market. Who will win? What will happen with the future? And which companies are going to thrive? I think like the dot-com bubble, where most of the internet companies went away, uh, were not successful. I think in this kind of paradigm shift of the world, I think there are a few companies, a few cryptocurrencies that are going to do extremely well, depending on what governments do and how they try and control this space. So in that sense, we're still kind of in the Wild West. No one knows. We're all speculating this in this space. If we knew a guaranteed, if everyone knew that the world was going in this particular direction and the XRP, Bitcoin, Ethereum were going to be the three coins that were going to change the world, then the whole world would invest in those coins and we wouldn't even need to be doing these videos. People wouldn't need to be doing these channels. Um, time will tell, but I'm very hopeful with what the fact that Ripple is working with the incumbents generally, although they're disrupting a lot of other incumbents, which is why I think you've had the SEC lawsuit. I think you have powerful people fighting other powerful people. Um, yeah, time will tell. It's it's all up in the air, but I think within the XRP community, we have uh, a very, very great chance of generational wealth. Especially, I think, what will happen first is going to be the uh, speculative bull run. And I think that speculative bull run, if you time it well, and you get control of your emotions, and I think you should be able to make a really, really good amount of money that will change your life, obviously, depending on how much you've invested. Try not to get carried away with the hype and the four digit kind of um, kind of narrative that some of the influencers put out there. Just be reasonable with your expectations. A lot of people seem to think that a $10 is kind of roundabout accurate. Again, I don't know, I'm not a chart expert. I'm just following it day by day. Um, yeah, but again, I'm very, very hopeful for the future. I think the more I look at Bitcoin, I think it the Bitcoin is a very beautiful kind of entity in itself where it has the it has been created so that it doesn't change. Like Ethereum, you can have a an agreement where the Ethereum network fundamentally changes if you have 80 plus percent of people that agree and then it changes. XRP is the same. If, if uh, people agree for a two week period that something should change, then that change will happen. Whereas Bitcoin seems to be almost impossible to change. I won't say completely impossible, but almost impossible. Even back in the day when they wanted to do this huge kind of change and upgrade to Bitcoin, I think 90 plus percent of people were in support of it, but it still didn't change. And that's what makes Bitcoin a very powerful thing. You kind of know what you're getting then and there. Me personally, I'm not invested in Bitcoin. Uh, if I had more money than I probably would. But my other, my other bet is with XRP and Ripple, the company pushing the use case, because when I look at Ethereum, Ethereum does amazing things, but uh, it's just the gas fees. It's just the gas fees on Ethereum. And Vitalik being such an influential person within Ethereum, I don't particularly trust him. And I think a lot of shady things have happened. And I think as we go forward, more of these things are going to be exposed. More of these things are going to be seen. And the very serious investors might kind of go, you know what? I think we're going to opt for another uh, blockchain project, another cryptocurrency, which could be Ripple, could be XRP. Could be Casper, could be anything, but okay, I've rambled on enough. I'm very excited. Uh, I was looking that we're only about 67 days from Christmas. My thoughts have always been fairly hopeful that we could have a bull run around Christmas time. The predictions are end of 2023, 2024, which is when you've got the Bitcoin halving, and 2025. So we're nearing the end of 2023, 67 days till Christmas. Are we going to hit a bull run around the Christmas period? I hope so. It would be a fantastic Christmas present for us all. Thank you very much for listening. Please remember this is not financial advice. Um, this is just for fun. 
and if you hit the like button it really helps me push this video out to more and more people so thank you very much